So I'm finally getting around to doing the UI video that a bunch of people have been asking me for. I've been asked a bunch about the floating combat text and some of the other leak aura stuff that I have going on. So I figured I'll just make this one video and point everyone towards it to get the answers to their questions. I think the things that are most important for my UI are the way I set up ELV UI, which is the frames you see here, all the unit frames and the uh, data frames. Um, details, which is the, the damage trackers on the bottom right. Uh, Omni CD, which is the cooldown tracking over here and interrupt tracking. Um, the scrolling combat text, which I think is more important than all of those. It's called like, I think it's called mixed scrolling battle text. And then the weak auras that I use here, which I use for all of the tanks. I'll go over each of them in the order that I think they are most important. Uh, from least important to most important. I'm um, using just a couple of examples from footage that I've recorded already. And then we'll all go into the game and actually show some some configuration options. But um, the first one that I think actually isn't that important for my setup is ELV UI. I, I really only use ELV UI as like a, a cosmetic add-on. Like I like the way that the frames look. I like how it's like simple and, and flat looking. Um, I like being able to you know group them all together out of sight in the bottom left hand corner, like the, the party frames, for example. The only real modifications that I do, um, and I'll put the I'll put the profile that I use in the description somewhere so you can import it if you want to you know modify it or something. The only thing I really do is make sure I remove myself from the party frames, at least when I'm tanking, and I put myself in the center. Um, I try to design it so that my eyes are are in a very small area on the screen. So like I'm always staring at myself and the enemies, which are right in the middle. So I put the health frames and the weak auras, which are attached to the health frames, as close to the middle as I can make them without actually getting them like in the way of my of my vision. Um, and also I put the target on the bottom right over here because I tend to not use the uh, the target frame. I tend to use just the unit frames, so I configured them to actually show you know all of my the buffs I want to track, um, which for like DK, it's like all my my dots and stuff. Um, and I do have like this down here, the target down here. If I need to see something, like you know, I, I have more debuffs on this unit frame than I do have on the actual the uh, frame above the the target's head. And I have like a target of target thing over here, so I like to have the information available to me if I need it, but keep it way out of sight because I don't often find that I that I need that that much. So uh, I do like Guild UI, but definitely more of like a a cosmetic uh, add-on for me. Moving on to details, there's a couple of things I make sure I get with details, um, which are the unit frames down here. They you know they tell you like the obvious things like like damage um, and healing done per round per uh, per pull. But the things that I make sure I also have are dynamic overall. That's more of like a you know like a vanity thing, not maybe not maybe super important for for a lot of runs as a tank, but. I'd like to know like which of the DPS are doing what. Um, uh, healing done is more of a more of like a like a FYI like who's doing the most healing kind of thing. I, the reason that I have all of these different panels over here is because I kind of optimize the the HUD to be most useful during um, VOD review. So if I want to know like how is something going, um, I can avoid having to look at the 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 logs for everything to find out everything. So I could just like mostly with this setup, look at my VOD and know exactly what was going on. Um, one thing I have here is interrupts as well, because I need to know basically like who's not interrupting in pug. So I can just like, you know, ask them to interrupt, which is like pretty often the case. This is like a semi organized run. So, you know, we're all doing a, a pretty good job of, of uh, interrupting here. Um, and in the, in a similar vein, the avoidable damage, which is over here, uh, is good to know. I, I started adding that because I was actually taking a ton of avoidable damage myself, but it's also good to know just, you know, who's like eating tons of frontals for no reason and making the, the healer's life like far more difficult than it has to be. Um, that and details has this action tracker over here. Um, and this is really useful for VOD review, basically. That's why I have it here. This and like other people will watch your videos and they'll say like, you know, what did you do over here? And they can actually just you know, peek at this window and tell. Another good thing to do with with uh, details is to get quick sanity checks on, you know, how can how is your damage rotation doing as, as a tank? So, like, I'm, I'm trying out right now the 
uh, Insatiable Hunger legendary, um, which turns your you know your comfort covenant ability um, Swarming Mist into like this big attack. Um, everyone says it sucks, but I kind of wanted to you know try it out. And so what I typically do is I'll I'll come over to target dummies. Um, I'll let me reset this so that the uh, the session restarts. Um, I'll come in here. I'll pretend you know I'm doing something. I'll throw this off. Bone storm. Get a few death strikes out to see how much damage it could really do, and then uh, start doing you know like the rest of the part that would be a damage rotation. In this case, you know I'm, I'm like popping off a uh, crimson moon weapon to to see how much I can pump out, and I'll get a good uh, rotation in, and then come over here and check out. I mean, it actually does do a ton of damage. So I think I'm going to play with, around with this more. But as far as details goes, what I usually like to look at is um, settings has a stats menu and you can look at the chart viewer for it. So you can see like, you know, it just helps you appreciate how high, uh, you know, if you're trying to get like your burst very high, like how high can you actually make it? Same thing for like the DPS specs, more useful there, obviously. But like if I want to, you know, run a build on the DK that I can run in, you know, dump all my damage and then run back out and kite. Like, you know, this looks like a pretty good candidate for, for doing that sort of thing. Um, and like, that was basically, yeah, how much did it actually do when it went off? It did like 70k on, on five targets. So, I mean, it's a, it's a good chunk of damage. But um, yeah, it's, it's like, I don't know, it's very nice for doing, you know, quick little prototyping and damage profile stuff. And the only other thing really to call out with details is that you can get, you know, plugins for it that will track other things. So avoid avoidable damage, I think, actually is a plugin in I think I think I downloaded this as like a, a curse add-on. Um the other one that I like to use for details is the explosive orb tracker. This is when I was trying to get better about handling explosives as the tank on Explosive Week. So there's actually a lot of nice little uh, like script things that you can do in here. I haven't used many of these, but maybe I actually should. But yeah, like I, I know I don't use potions enough, for example. So I could, you know, uh, to make something a priority for me, like I'll I'll make sure I put it on on one of the panels here, and then when I watch the vods, I can say like, okay, I did or I did not do what I what I'm trying to get better at doing. Okay, so getting on to some of the more interesting stuff here. Um, the next one is Omni CD, which is way more important, I think, than the the previous ones for me personally. Um, the way I set up Omni CD, like for me, it, it's basically just this interrupt window over here that is that is important. But more importantly, it's the cooldown tracker on the left hand side that I I set up the cooldown tracker to go split the offensive and defensive cooldowns on the top and bottom rows next to every single player. So like going into this double pull, I need to make sure that we actually have cooldowns to, to kill them before they you know just truck me on necrotic week um so i i knew from a glance that like the warrior is like completely set up to have you know his his burst cooldowns which uh probably makes him pull aggro immediately from me unfortunately um i think he does die here but i don't know if it's my fault or not unfortunately but but yeah having the and actually he yeah he so he uses defensive cooldowns too so i mean uh i think i i did as much damage as i could <laughs> unfortunately for him um but being able to just glance and say like you know like two of my team members are ready to just like you know blow cooldowns on this pack um like i i it makes me more confident to know that like i i can actually pull like a double or a triple pack right now and not end up having it take forever or make it awkward with their cooldown timings um i think most people definitely like to look at the defensives i think the defensives might be the default profile for omni cd but but having it just like be top row offensive, and I think I also set it to put like miscellaneous cooldowns in the top row, just to, to know like uh, I don't know why I did that. I think you have to like basically pick to put it somewhere, or you can have a triple row, but the, the triple row had like really small icons, so I I didn't really care much for that. Um, yeah, so you can see a pod tender is like on the top row there, and arguably you can say that that's more of a defensive ability, but but there are some things I think that made it look like it, the opposite, so. It's kind of arbitrary, but just having all of them here is is the important part. And of course, you know, in inspires you have a double Goliath pull, so you need to know if people mess up their their interrupts so that you can like pick up the slack. And like incinerator archolith is like another one over there. Like I'll I'll call things out, but sometimes people just like don't listen or make mistakes. So just having this interrupt tracker is a uh, is very useful. 
The next add-on up is called Mix Scrolling Battle Text. And the purpose of this add-on is to change your, your scrolling combat text. And this is one of my favorites, actually. So the current setup that I'm using here, it splits the offensive uh, and defensive, like the incoming actions and the outgoing actions, into the right and the left set. So if I, if I pause it over here, you can see that, like, I'm, I'm taking, like, you know, 8K, 5K, 11K. Like, if I come back here, the, the main purpose of, of this add-on is basically for VOD review. Like, if I come back here and I found, like, you know, during the run, like, whoa, well, like, what the what the hell just sent me for, for 20K? You know, I can, I can come back in here and actually see, you know, like, okay, what ability was it? And then I can use that to go into the logs, get more details if I have to get more details. It's really about, like, ease of use when it comes to the, uh, like, finding out what happened after the fact. Um... Also, one one really cool thing that it does is you can see over here it says um, 11k blood boil. Like what it does is it you can have it aggregate. You know if like if you do blood boil to 10 people or, or I guess it's, maybe it's damage capped. Actually, I don't even know. But if you hit like five people with something, it'll it'll aggregate them into like you know one grand total. So you don't have to look at you know four different like 1,000 hits. You know and wonder like okay, but how much did I actually you know do over there? Um, that uh, and just having like, you know, spam control options where like I, I filter out everything below I think like a thousand, everything below a thousand damage from from this menu. You, you see like right now I can tell like okay I can count on you know doing about a couple of thousand damage every tick with Bloodstorm, uh, sorry with Bonestorm, and then over here I can see like okay like you know maybe my R Druid can not keep up with like this one random thing I'm doing so I've got to actually you know back off a little bit on Necrotic Week. It's really just about, uh, like, in the moment, getting all of those damage numbers, like, out of the main view. Because, I mean, really, like, they're nice to see, but you don't need to see that information in real time. Like, I, I found. Like, it's sometimes fun to see it in real time, but but uh, it doesn't really help you do anything, like, in the moment. So after the fact, it helps It helps a lot with finding out, you know, what, what, uh, what actually happened when you were doing it, what went wrong, and what went right and you know if you're trying out a new legendary like insatiable hunger like you, you can appreciate the damage that it does way more if you can aggregate those into one giant number as opposed to like you know five little numbers it's kind of hard to appreciate that um i also have it i think set up to never show me like melee hits in or out like i don't really ever care about you know the white damage basically like the only big white damage that happens is a boss and and uh in mythic there's you know there's only one boss so it's not it's never really Never really a, a huge surprise, or it's never hard to track down what's happening there. Um, one good example of how I was able to use the the scrolling combat text to actually make a lot of improvements was this is back on my warrior. This is a previous video. Um, I was able to look at I think like in the moment, like right there, like I'm getting chunked, and I was not expecting to get chunked like whatsoever in this in this fight. But I think yeah, so right here you can see like 18k from uh turns out the rock biter like i use the icon and i look in the logs and i say like okay what the hell is doing 18k to me and it turns out that on you know on fortified raging week rock rock bound sprites do like 18k per hit to you so <laughs> like uh you, you never really i mean for all you know in the moment like you just got hit by a bunch of things at once but you can easily tell that that was like one thing that hit you one rock biter because you got back attacked when you were charged wrong so it's like a really good tool to improve it's probably worth talking a little bit about how to configure it because unfortunately it doesn't really have any like profile export option. So I think the command is like msbt. Um, I'll include the the file that you have to um, copy and paste into the WTF folder in the description below somewhere. But um, some of the important things are um, like if you're going to modify this for yourself, like I really only include like incoming and outgoing, which I think it's actually predefined to to set up on the right and the left sides. Um, there are several events that you might want to filter out of these two uh, categories. Everything is modeled as like an event in this add-on. So um, the one thing to know is that uh, if you want to impact the things in this column, you have to go to like the, the outgoing uh, player stuff. So this was like, you know, without without this, if I enable this, then like my heat, my melee hits will show up over here. But that information is like completely useless. First of all, like it's like pathetically small anyway. But like I don't need it clogging up, you know, the uh, the outgoing 
area. Like I'd rather just see like, you know, what's the big insatiable hunger hit? And it's like 75k. Like, okay, that's that's great, actually. Um there's that and the incoming um player stuff, everything that appears on the left hand side over here. I think I just take out a few things. Like uh I don't take out the misses. I, I yeah, I sorry, I omit the misses and the deflects. And I didn't used to include parries and dodges, but since that's like my main source of like not getting hit as a as a DK, like I'll often throw like swarming mist out along with um, rune weapon, and like nothing will hit me. So I kind of want to see that now because there's no like opportunity cost because everything's missing me anyway. So there's nothing really to see in that area, and I do want to know sometimes like when I'm getting hit by like a ton of stuff, like okay, how much of it am I? Am I blocking versus, or sorry, uh, parrying versus versus dodging? Um, the other thing that you can control and tune here is the spam control. So you can say like, you know, like if something happens every second, like don't show it every second. Or like if I don't want to see anything below 700, this I wish you can customize a bit. Like I, I make it 700 because I don't want to see like every one of my, my pathetic um, heart tricks. So sometimes my heart tricks are like, but between like my heart strikes and my dot ticks, it's just like too much information. So putting it to like 750 filters out or 700 filters out most of it. Um, I'd rather put it a little bit higher, but at like 1500, I sometimes don't see some interesting stuff. Um, you can play around with this to see like, you know, what, what feels good to you. I, I happen to like also get rid of the names. So if I you know do that, like it, you could have it say like, I don't, uh, my character name did this to these this character name or vice versa but i didn't find that that to be very useful it was like very long and cluttered so i just disabled that i think that's basically everything for the floating or the scrolling combat text yeah i feel like this is not a, a super well-known add-on but i think it's my favorite combat text add-on that i've used so far so i recommend it okay and now on to the big one which is obviously weak auras. Um, most of my weak aura, like the like most of my my weak aura usage is like captured right here in the middle. I usually do my own thing with weak auras. Like I don't really use other people's classes because part of part of learning the class to me is actually like developing the weak aura. Because like I feel I feel that if I can program it, you know, and and weak aura, if I if I something, I can actually understand it enough to make a weak aura. Then I feel like I actually do. Do understand the class well enough to you know at least play at a, at a reasonable level. There's a couple of things that I I do for all of my tanks, um, well for all of my characters actually. Um, I usually split this. I usually have a weak aura right in the middle above above the character bar, so I can see it you know close to where all the action is. I usually design it so that everything glows when it needs to be used or can be used, because more often than not, like. Most people's problems, and my, at least my problem in the past, was always not using abilities enough. So I feel like you know making it so that it glows whenever you need to use it is like a way to get your attention and train yourself to to start using these things more. I always split it into left, uh, usually three groups actually. It's different in my blood DK because my blood DK has like so many defensives, and I don't really consider any of them purely offensives. But but um, usually I have like the left hand side will be core rotational abilities. Like these are things I expect myself to use, you know, often during my my rotation. The middle is usually like an offensive cooldown block, and the right side is usually some sort of like defensive cooldown block. It, it so happens that Blood DK has like you know three million defensives, but but uh, yes, yeah, so you can see like over here, this is Bloodstorm. So when I when I'm running in, like I know I have to. I usually order them in priority as well. Like the most important thing will be in the top left. So I'll be running in, like I have no no bone storm up. So I, you know, bone storm. I, you know, rune. Actually, I forget, I forget the other thing this thing. Blood tap it. Uh, bone storm. Sorry, I keep calling it bone storm for some reason. Um, marrow rend to get bone shield charges. Yeah. So now I have it set up so that I can see like how long I have left and how many charges I have. So I know if I have to, you know, refresh something. Uh, blood boil. I keep the charges there and make them glow when I'm capped at two charges. Um, I can see how many charges, how many, how many, how long I have until a charge comes off. So I'll just keep it on cooldown more or less. My pet over here has to be used, so you know I'll, I'll throw him out there. That that can the blood boil comes back up, so I use blood boil again. Uh, basically every pull I do like swarming mist and then bone storm. 
So now, now I look over here, I see like everything's not glowing. I'm good. Oh, glowing. Okay, now I'm bad again. Now I'll, I'll make it good. Uh, about to glow. I'll keep it on cooldown. It's kind of hard for DK because <laughs> there are like so many things you have to like keep on cooldown. Um, but over here on the right side, we see a dancing rune weapon. So that's another one. One thing I like to do is is keep every weak aura so that um, if it has some sort of like a aura it applies to you, which is the case with dancing rune weapon, then it'll glow like here. Here I'll show. It'll, it'll glow red while I have it active. So now I know like over here. Like, I've got six seconds of dancing room weapon time left. So, okay, I want to get one marrow rend in so I can get double stacks. I want to get a few of these uh, charges out of of uh, Blood Boil before it goes away because it's a double damage. Um, over here, you can see I have a you know one proc of, of my Death and Decay. I can throw it out there. Now I can track how long it has so I can spam more Heart Strikes out for, for you know, the five-person cleave. And it, that's, that's basically the idea. You know, the same thing goes for... My uh, vampiric blood. If I use it, it'll have a red aura around it. Um, same thing goes for my icebound fortitude. Um, looks like I didn't make this actually set up so that it sh does the uh, the red border, but I'll actually I'll just do that right now, so you can see kind of how it how it works. Um, as soon as I'm outside of combat, I can go do my blood DK weak aura. I think my swarming mists also doesn't do that. So typically they're pretty simple. Like they're just, you know, they have a uh, they have triggers and they have, um, they're either on cooldown or not on cooldown, and that gets you like ninety percent of the way there. Um, I usually have it set up so that it glows when it's not on cooldown. That tells you to use it, and I have this like second condition over here for everything that makes it just, you know become desaturated if you're not in combat because like I don't need to see you know I, I know I'm out of combat like I don't need to see any of that kind of stuff. That's like a personal preference thing. It's not it's not a huge deal, but. Now, if I want this to, to glow, then what I have to do is I have to come in here into the display panel, and I have to add a glow. The glow has to have a custom color, and I like to make it red. And then I come back into the trigger, and I make sure it's on any. Um, I add a trigger for when I see the swarming mist aura on myself. Um, or is found and I go to the conditions and say if that new one which was three is active then I will make the second glow visible so that means now if I go over here um, actually before we do that I might as well also do it to uh, to bone storm which I always pop at the same time as as a uh, Swarming Mist, so same thing. Come down here, add a glow to it, um, use the custom color, make it red. Usually usually I do this like one time and I keep on copying and pasting the add-on, or sorry, the weak aura over and over again. So I don't have to like do this very often, but I guess I made these long enough ago that it was before I started doing this kind of a thing with the with weak auras. But but uh yeah, so come in here, make uh make myself look for the Bone Storm, I assume it's called Bone Storm. Um, I know some people like to use IDs, so it's like language agnostic, but I figured I would never like, you know, make a, a super popular language pack. So, or sorry, a, a weak aura. I, I didn't feel like it was necessary. And it's kind of harder to maintain too, or just like me for my own personal use. But I don't know if someone wants to, you know, change it to IDs, I don't have a strong, uh, not strongly opposed to that, of course. Um, and finish it off with adding trigger three blow. So now it should be the case that whenever I come in here and I do Swarming Mist and I do Bone Storm, I get to see how long... Actually, no. See? Yeah. Um, it doesn't show how long the duration currently is, which is what I want to see most of the time. And the uh, the tricky thing with League Oros is like, sometimes you just have to play with like things until until you can you can see it. So okay, I think what's happening here is um, it matches the first active trigger, and because my new trigger is the last one, I think it will uh, not show the duration. Only I think only durations are associated with buffs, whereas like these cooldown ones don't have that sort of information associated with it. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna gamble here live and say that if I just put the aura one on the top, that it should uh, end up showing me what I want to see. Um, so in one second, I'll throw out Swarming Mist. And yeah, that works perfectly. So now I can see, like, okay, how many seconds of runic power generation do I have? Like, how long am I invincible from, you know, my, my Bone Storm uh, healing me for uh, 14k every single time? This this shows, like, overhealing. Uh, yeah, I just, man, this the combat text one is just so useful to me. Like, that's so nice to see. Like, okay, what's actually happening here, you know, over time? But... Um, oh, and this this over here, this one is Draven, Draven's uh, standstill uh, cooldown thing. So I, I make that like shine when I haven't stood still long enough to actually get it. And once I stand still long enough and it gives me the, the Draven buff, then I make it, you know, not do anything. If I start moving again, you can see, you know, it starts going on cooldown. So I have to stop moving before it goes off. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll show real quick how it looks on the monk and the warrior as well. Okay, so here we are on the warrior. Um, very similar setup. I've got some extra stuff like, okay, if I ever lose battle shout, I make sure I just battle shout. But the uh, the principles are the same. Like my most important things I have, more on the left. You know, these are my core rotational abilities. These are things that I basically do every single pull. Um, I actually do have an offensive cooldown on my warrior. So there is a, a second group here in the middle. And then here are my defensive cooldowns on warrior. So, you know, every, every pull, I'll charge in. I have... Uh, charge on cooldown. If it ever reaches, you know, more than one stack, it'll go it'll go shiny again. You know, I, I should be using intervene right now. If it were a dungeon, I should be using shield slam, uh, shield block, uh, throw down my avatar and my ravager, throw down that, my my spear, and like you know now they're now they're on cooldown. So this is a pretty nice um, weak aura that I borrowed from someone else online. Basically, a little a little weak aura that tells you like how much ignore pain you have it's white if you won't cap your ignore pain if you use it again um now it's red so that means like if i do use ignore pain i'll get like nothing out of it basically um but very similar principles just like like i have groups over here and i tell myself to use things by making them glow and and they glow whenever they can be used basically yeah it's almost always better like in my experience it's just like you know want to use them rather than holding them for some arbitrary point in the future especially when they're so short you know i think like the only long cooldown i really have on my on my tanks is is a fortifying brew on my brewmaster but yeah i'll show i'll show the brewmaster equivalent of this as well right now so here's the brewmaster it'll look very familiar um same setup same you know general philosophy here we have the left hand side has all of my core rotational abilities, things that you always use. The middle has my my damage cooldowns. Um, I do just throw the ox in the middle here as a damage cooldown. Like it is technically a defensive cooldown as well, but like I, I really use it more as an offensive cooldown. Um, it lines up pretty well with uh, weapons of order, so I kind of just think of it that way. And the right hand side is my defensive cooldowns over here. So you know I'll, I'll get in, I'll you know, keg smash, I'll have to do my breath. Um, if I was taking damage, I would be purifying right now. Um, I can use my my shield over here, then throw out my defensives. Uh, my sorry, my offenses. Then my you know one defensive per pull, typically. Maybe uh, you know fortifying brew. You, you get the idea. Um, yeah, they all they all basically work like the the same way on like a priority use this ability type system, and they're all pretty close to the the main area and screen that I that I have to look. Um, there's one weak aura that's actually specific to the warrior, which I thought was a very cool weak aura that I had to get pretty fancy making, and that is my my back attack weak aura. So I found in you know in this sanguine depths run that I did a couple of months ago during fortified, uh, during fortified raging week, that I was getting back attacked way more than I thought I was, um, and that's a huge deal for warrior because like my my mitigation is shield block and depends on not getting back attacked which isn't the case really for you know the other tanks like you know if i get you know an extra back attack here or there on my dk like you know i, I probably would have taken that full damage anyway so it's not a huge deal you know dr still work from the back um uh my monk has uh, everything staggered so you know i i can't dodge it that's true but 
Uh, a couple here and there aren't a huge deal. But on, on the warrior, it's actually like a massive deal. So when I have shield block and I get hit, I get this little like bam. Yeah, right there. So whenever I get hit in the back, I have a I know, accumulating counter over there. It says bam in my ear, so I know that like this is happening. Um, I can silence it by having any sort of mitigation up. You can see that you know if I have my shield block maxed out and I turn around, I'll actually still, uh, if I take Lignor you know, Pain off, now I'm still getting hit. So I know, like now I know that yes, I do have my shield block up, but I'm getting hit in the back. And at the end of the dungeon, I can see, you know, I was actually hit, you know, 40 times in the back. So then I know I have to like, you know, stop, you know, intervening through crowds of mobs and stop charging, you know, through or towards like running mobs because they hit you in the back, for example. That's a nice one. I'll, I'll include that below. I, I had to get pretty, pretty uh, fancy. I actually had to like do Lua coding for that one. And I actually do have one that is specific to the DK as well. This is not my week or up, but I'll, I'll try to link it. Um, it's a prediction for healing week or up. So uh, you can see here, this little green line will tell you more or less like how far, uh, how much you'll heal yourself if you, uh, you were to heal right now. So I can like, you know, pump it up with a blood boil before I use it or you know, I, if it drops down drastically before I use it because I've been kiting, for example, then maybe I won't. Maybe I'll hold off a little bit because it'll be like a minimum healing a strike. Um, or maybe I'll just opt for, you know, using blood spattered scale right now because like my healing won't be efficient. I'll take some damage with my, my scale, then I'll heal it up even more. Um, or, or maybe it's just a good indicator that like, you know, things aren't looking good and I have to pop my vamp blood and, you know, just heal, heal up as soon as I can. That, that that actually made uh like understanding you know what to expect out of death strikes pretty pretty easy um and the the only other thing i think is this um interrupt week aura I, I like to have all the interrupts basically in the same spot for every character so like they're always in the middle like on the right hand side of my unit frames i just have like one master week aura that i manually add kicks to for every class and i just make them load for you know the right class, so I don't always, so I don't always see them, and just they'll always be in the same spot. And I'll, if I if I interrupt, then I'll just see it you know uniformly across all of my tanks. And uh, just a couple of honorable mentions that that aren't a huge deal, but I'll, I'll just like kind of rapid fire shout them out here at the end. Um, Mythic Plus Timer is the one that shows you like your progress for you know your current Mythic Plus run. That's a pretty popular one. Um, this this window over here is a weak aura that I'll link that just shows you what your current stats are. Um, this this I have here because um, it was useful to me in bod review. Basically, like I was tracking um, procs uh, that increased my my stats and uh, I was trying to see like okay like am I using you know whatever damage windows I have uh, effectively? You know I think I have I'm still stuck with two unused trinkets, so I have this overwhelming power crystal. Um, so I can see like if I pop it over here, you know, I get like 15% more crit. So I could just like quickly see that while watching the VOD without having to, you know, go in and log dive or anything. It's like pretty convenient. Um, also helps for me to know like, okay, like how was I itemized at this point in time? My blood DK is actually still kind of poorly itemized relative to my, my other tanks. Um, another one that I like a lot, which has nothing to do with anything that's useful is this better wardrobe add-on. You know, like with typically your your transmog window is like like tiny and like you're a torrent that fills up more than the window. So this thing just blows it up to make it the actual entire screen. And you can see like it tells you, you know, like all the sets that actually exist, even if there aren't like proper sets or you haven't created them. And you can see like, okay, how much of this set do I have? Like I have this entire one. I have only part of this one. So it's a pretty convenient the quality of life improvement for for uh, transmogs. Um, another one that I use uh, is Bagnon. I guess I'll just shout that one out as well. <laughs> I like this one because um, it still looks relatively like the the normal bags. Something about ELV UI just like doesn't really look right to me. I think I wanted like 
you know, the, like this overview of all my characters, but maybe it gives me that too. Yeah, so it does give me that too. Bagnon, I don't know. I guess I just like the way the, uh, the look and feel of it. It also has like a, a search tool. I don't know if LVUI has a search tool, um, but maybe I'm just actually blowing it up more than, than I should be. Um, and the last one is Auctionator, just another another uh, useful tool. Um, I can come in here after it runs and instead of having to like look up the price of individual items and like set them manually and like click on like, post for each one, I can just like right click, you know, or left click some meat. I can tell like, okay, this one sells for a decent amount. I configured it to like undercut prices by one silver. So I'll just like post them all like, okay, over here, undercut by one silver. And I literally just have to like, you know, click on things, see if they're worth selling. Like this fish is probably not worth selling. Eat, uh, worth selling. This thing, uh, marrow root, marrow root, marrow root, worth selling. So another useful one. Uh, yeah. Let me know if you have any questions for it. I guess I'll probably point back to this video a bunch now, but I think my favorite ones by far are are the scrolling combat text and like this sort of weak aura like paradigm that I've been uh, using. The, this is like what I've kind of settled upon as like the most you know efficient for, for my use case. So hopefully that helps you. See you later.